think some of you know that uh, as soon as mom got her diagnosis, I, uh, we sat down, I think about a week later, and did a series of interviews. So I've got about three hours of interviews with her that uh, just tell her whole life story. And I already knew all the answers to the questions, so I, but I just, I just probed it, uh, you know, I got it all out of her as much as I possibly oh, could. And just to try to record her stories, I've got those pictures, I've got, uh, and, a, and a lot of video that I can put together too, and, and to uh, uh, yep. appropriately commemorate her life in a wider venue. Will than, we get, will you oh, absolutely, to absolutely. Yeah. I'm gonna run it by TV Ontario first and see if oh, they like it, and if they wanna broadcast it, cool, but otherwise, whatever, I'll just put it on YouTube. You know, yeah. like, that's, that's fine too, okay. just so that it's out there. So, you know, we all... Is it okay where we are? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Good. Yeah, we're rolling. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. And and this could be casual, and it, and uh, <laughs> mom was not. At certain points in her life, she was very fussy about things, but at other points, she was a lot more casual. And during her period here, much you know, increasingly casual as as life went on. Uh, you know, I met her uh, late in life. I met her at 32. I met my mother after seven years of searching. And it was just a, a life-changing experience for the both of us, you know, like it really radically changed both of our lives. And uh, I'd found my, my real history. She'd found the son that they'd taken away from her. And, you know, it was a, a traumatic event for her that really my conception and birth were really a, a pivotal point in her life. Like when you see pictures of her uh, young, she was very idealistic. She'd seen some hard things too, but uh, you know, um, just having to go through my conception and birth was really tough, and it, it changed her. And I think it uh, it was it was tough on her emotionally, but she was extremely strong. Uh, and then uh, she went on, and it gave her the strength to have this this exceptional career that we know that she had. That she just had to be the best at everything she ever did, and and for the most part, she was. You know, she was an amazing just. Superwoman, really, you know, just a, it's just an amazing thing. And I'm honored, you know, like uh, what I, I'm such an undeserving vessel of this, but she loved me with all her heart. And that's, that's the wonderful thing. She was such a superwoman. I am not uh, anywhere near as good a person as she is, but she loved me nonetheless. And that was a, that was a wonderful thing. And uh, I could just go on and on about all the anecdotes I have of her, of what a, an amazing woman she was and just an exceptional in every way, but, uh, couldn't do her justice, but uh, I'll try to in another format. So I would like to uh, introduce uh, you to her. One of the things that mom was most proud of was her ability to be a dory rower and be strong, you know, and be a woman and, uh, in a dory and moving this big heavy boat around at, at speed. And this is her championship uh, winning partner, Shirley Daly. So yeah. come on. In dory racing circles, I think they called me by my married name, which was Robichaud. But Daly is my maiden name, my good old Irish name. Mm -hmm. So I've got my notes on paper, just in case I get nervous. And thank you, Mike, for giving me this opportunity to speak about Susan. Your mom. Happy to. Some of you knew Susan as a friend a mother, alto singer in the choir, artist, and yoga teacher. And I'm finding out that she was much more than that. I knew Susan as a dory racer and my dory mate. I first saw Susan when she was singing in the alto section of the Riverport Community Choir. And this was way back in the day when we sang out of the old Riverport school which no longer exists. So it was a few years back that we met. My dory mate at that time also called Susan, and it's not that I just raced with Susans, but that's how it happened, was wanting to quit dory racing. So I was looking, I was on the lookout for a new partner. And when I spied Susan, I thought, isn't she, wouldn't she be the perfect dory mate for me? She was tall and fit and statuesque and very strong looking. When I approached her, I had no idea 
if, if she'd ever rowed or even if she'd been around boats or the water or was even interested because I didn't really know her. But if you knew Susan, you'll know she just jumped at the chance. Susan had been around sailboats in Ontario, so was familiar with being on the water. And she expressed a keen liking for dories. So shortly afterwards, we were on the water. And I realized Susan was a quick study. I had always been a bow girl, and Susan's physique was perfect as a stern girl. I laugh when I use that expression, because, the, because there was a man on the Dory committee who could never remember our names, so he called, just called us the bow girl and the stern girl. Um, the stern girl assists with landmarking, so we went straight for the buoy, but most importantly, she sets the pace. The bow girl makes sure that we are on course for turning the buoy, or boy, however you pronounce that, and calls out to the stern girl as we got closer, because a nice tight turn on buoy is what makes your race. So you have to work together as a team. Susan and I rode together for quite a while, but never winning. There was no age category for women, and we had to compete with women from teenagers and up. We were always the oldest. One year we came second place. There were two teams. <laughs> and we won this. <laughs> second place winners. It looks like something out of the Vatican, doesn't it? I thought they should have served us wine in that, but they didn't. <laughs> um, but we were really excited to get the second place cup. And getting awards was a change for us and maybe a little heady. Susan desperately wanted a category for women and discussed it a lot and fought for it actually with, committee, with the committee members. As we knew, we could never compete with these younger women. Lo and behold, the year I turned 64, and Susan turned 65, no, Susan turned 63, we, year difference. The announcement came that there was an over 40 category. Woo hoo, such excitement. We were determined to win, determined. Every other morning we were out in the Lunenburg Harbor at 7 a.m. What fun we had. We did a lot of singing. And I'm not sure the people sleeping in the other boats or on shore really appreciated it. <laughs> if it was foggy, we sang in the fog, thick of fog, from the Riverport Choir. Our favorites were Sea People, Breton's Fisherman's Prayer, Call of the Ocean, Away from the Roll of the Sea, and all those sea-related songs that we sang in the choir. Sometimes we couldn't see the water tower because of fog, which makes, makes the landmarking a little difficult for us, it did anyway. And we saw a lot of things. We saw seals, a lot of seals in the harbor. And one morning a porpoise came right up to the dory, so close that we could touch it with the oar. And you could see the the design on its skin, that's how close it was. And I had never been that close to a porpoise in my life. And of course, the, if we raced later in the day or any time, the blue nose was out there and the eastern star and the people would always be clapping and taking pictures. And as we went in and out from the wharf, the, the tourists were always there. So I'm sure our pictures are all over the world. <laughs> and sometimes leaving the dock with big boats on both sides. We had to try to impress the tours and not run into any of them. So we worked really hard. I brought some of my marathon training into it, doing sprints and those sort of things. And then, so we would start out doing sprints and then the shorter strokes and before settling into the long, strong ones, because that, those are the strokes that makes or breaks a race. Then came race day. 
Oh, I was really, really nervous. Susan had me doing a little yoga on the on the wharf before I got in the dory. Oh yes, I had to do the rag doll and deep breathing and everything because she wanted to loosen me up before I got in that dory. Well, to make a long story uh, short, it worked. We finally won a race. <laughs> And our competitors were two 40-year-olds, and we were 63 and 64. <laughs> <laughs> that was my swan song. But Susan raced for a little while after, doing mixed doubles. And I think she raced with you, Mike. Did she? You, you yeah, rode I together. Yeah, I had worse experience. She yelled at me. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yes, that, that reminds me of a funny thing that... In the song, uh, Sea People, um, strong of the spirit and rough of the hand. Well, I, got, I was getting very severe arthritis in my hands. So Susan would, sing, would say, strong of the spirit and weak of the hand. <laughs> um, anyway, so the first and last time for me rowing, we were first place winners. So, Susan, I hope you're up there, out there somewhere, teaching yoga and rowing with the angels. Thank you very much, Shirley. And if I may, I'll, uh, I'll introduce you. Yeah. Of course. Thank you. <sighs> Thank you so much, Shirley. So, uh, just as, as a bit of an interstitial to this, uh, when my mom retired at 53, nice and early, and, and, what, and, and she literally said, what the hell am I going to do with myself now? Uh, she'd always, she told me anecdotes of when she went through TV Ontario, she would go to the art department and, and touch the art supplies. She just loved, you know, because her folks had not let her uh, do much art as a child, and so, you know, she just loved that idea. And when we first met, one of the first, actually the very first gift I ever bought her was a, a set of pencils and a sketchbook. And we'd go to the Royal Ontario Museum and we'd draw together, and and then she decided, I'm going to go to art school. And a wonderful thing, to, uh, you know, uh, any student getting into NASCAD, they have to have three letters of recommendation. Well, mom was always very proud that her, her letters of recommendation, normally they're from your guidance counselor, your local priest, you know, your teacher or your art teacher. Moms were from the, the head of the National Film Board of Canada, the head of English programming at TV Ontario, and the ha head of the National Gallery of Canada. So when they saw her resume coming in, they said, please, teach here. But she said, nope. She didn't want to touch video again. She didn't want to techno technology again. She wanted to do art and create pretty things. And, and that's what she did. And one of her absolute best friends in her whole life, she met there at NASCAD, and that's Leilani Guerin, who uh, they just worked together. And uh, mom just had nothing but great things to say about this lady. So <laughs> let's hear what she has to say about mom. Thank you, Mike, for this opportunity. I also got my notes as a good NASCAD student, always <laughs> repair. <laughs> So uh, my name is Leilani Garon Mills, and um, we Susan and I met at the at NASCAD University, the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, in 2008. I uh, just moved here from Washington D.C., originally from Bolivia, and immediately Susan was one of my closest and dearest friends. She was a bright and generous spirit, and she loved life. Also, she loved her NASCAD experience. We just happened to have the same painting class, and we sat next to each other, and you know, I immediately turned around, talked to her, and she's like, oh my goodness, thank goodness you're talking to me, because the students think I'm the teacher. <laughs> so I'm so glad we're talking. <laughs> so, you know, we, um, we were both uh, mature students at this point, and we shared many things. And one of those um, were the, the dream of becoming a painter. And as mature students, we were kind of funny together in the class because we would be like sitting in the front row, putting our hands up, like having everything ready before anybody else. And, mm -hmm. and she was even, like she was a perfectionist. She loved making sure that every single thing she put her mind to was perfect. 
as you know, yeah, Mike. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was really adorable uh, to share with her as a student uh, at a point in life where you know you could be somewhere else. But we loved our NASCAR experience. Um, being new to Nova Scotia, um, I really didn't know the places, and as my husband Jim will attest, I have no sense of direction, like <laughs> none. But Susan, she knew everywhere. So because of all the projects we had to do, um, many times we'll go off somewhere, she will drive uh, to go and um, plan her painting. So we'll go to, we, we were just driving with Jim and I saw Blue Rocks, that was one of the places that we went and many places around here. And one of my fondest memories of our time together was when the two of us went to Peggy's Cove and I was there before with Jim, but coming back to that place with Susan and we were like coffee and our painting supplies or canvases ready. So we said, okay, we'll set up a little bit farther. So farther from the tourists so we can paint in tranquility. Okay, okay. So we set up, we were there. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're walking away and from the corner of my eyes, I see these people coming and I'm like, don't talk to me, don't talk to me, please don't talk to me. And then uh -huh. she's like, oh, hi, you know, <laughs> yes, come over. Yes, yes, this is the painting. Yeah, yeah, we're both NASCAR students. Yes, and yeah, you know, and acrylics. Anyway, she loved talking with people about what we were doing, what we were becoming. You know, she was becoming a painter on her own right. And that was beautiful to see. One of the last classes Susan and I took together was a class in children's literature at NASCAD. Now, bear in mind, being from Bolivia, all my children's books were completely different. So that was an amazing experience to share with her because, first of all, she had all of those books. She will be already, she will know everything about them. So she will be, you know, generously talking to me about all of the books and the stories and all that. So she was a keen student. So I'll call her and I'll say, Susan, okay, we have, we, this, this book is due, you know, when, whenever. I'm in page 200 out of 600, where are you? And she'll be like, oh, I'm done. I already wrote the paper. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Needless to say, she aced every single project on that class and it was, it, she loved it. She really loved it. Um, we also had the opportunity to share an exhibit together alongside four other painters from NASCA, all, all of us as students. And uh, the exhibit was um, generously supported by Jim's company, Office Interiors. And it was about, um, I think the title was 30 Views of Nature. And of course, I will never forget Susan arriving with her son, Mike. Mike, you know, helping her with all the paintings. And Susan, she was like absolutely beautiful that day. And she was proud as a peacock. She was just like beaming. And remember Mike, like she, like she, we, we all had like a little spot in office interiors and she had her own room where all the beautiful paintings around. It was, it was a beautiful thing to see. We really loved that opportunity to share it together. Another special moment that Jim and I shared with Susan uh, was when we got married and she on like her idea, I think I can't remember how long she walked on the uh, shores of um, Nova Scotia looking for wish stones. So there's little white, or, or, or there's the little white stones, but then also wish stones. The wish little, stones, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. She, she said, Leilani, that's going to be my gift to you and Jim. I said, perfect. So anyway, we had like more than 200 guests. And guess what? Every single guest had a stone. So that was a beautiful thing. And, you know, she collected them all and it was great. So she was a very, she was a generous person. She loved sharing everything, everything she knew, everything she had, especially the time with the people she loved. Um, one of my fondest memories about uh, Susan was when she first invited me into her home and I was blown away by the beauty of this place and how proud she was and you know 
she was a storyteller. So she would say, okay, Leilani, like that rug, I got it in this place when I was doing that. And you know, it was just great. And every corner, she put her love into it. Now, the most impressive thing to me as a painter was that, as you can see, the walls were surrounded, were with all the paintings of her. They were dressed by her artwork. And that was really beautiful. Like, I was so impressed by that. And in her kitchen and in that table, we spend many, many times together. Like, we'll, okay, coming to your house. And I was telling Jim uh, in our drive here, I don't know how I got there because I have no sense of direction. <laughs> so it'll be like a big thing when I'll be like, I'm here, I made it. And she'll be so happy. And, you know, so we'll spend hours on that kitchen table working on a project or she will be teaching me watercolors or, you know, like we will always be sharing time. And it was just full of fun and laughter, sharing stories. And when we were working away, she was baking something like beautiful and she would just whisk a quiche and these blueberry muffins. And, and she was just so proud of this place. And she said, see Leilani, the countertops, I made them exactly to my height. <laughs> like, and look, this one is the spice one and this one has this and everything was just like perfect. Like, this was her place and she loved it so much. So that was, uh, um, you know, coming to this place, it was, it was always beautiful because um, she loved it here. She loved her coffee in those red chairs, looking at the water, like this place was made for her and she absolutely really loved it. And um, I was so glad about um, to hear about the Dory stories oh. because uh, this is uh, one of my treasure paintings from Susan, uh, Susan Bevan, 2015, and the title is Hunky Dory. And um, I am so thrilled to hear all the stories about her rowing mate and all the experiences. Well, I have one on my own. And uh, I am not a morning person at all. So one time I come here and she always prepared that beautiful room upstairs for me. And she always had like a cup of tea and she says a beautiful bookstore. Like she said, this book and this book, Leilani, read anything you want. And anyway, I felt so welcome here. But then one, one time I'm here, she said, well, guess what we're doing tomorrow? And I'm like, okay, you know, we're going to paint it. She's like, nope. We're gonna get up at five o'clock in the morning and we're going rowing. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> see. Anyway, we sure did. And I've never been in a dory in my life. So that would, that would be an experience I never forget. And she was so excited to take me there to show me her beloved dory. And, you know, she was so strong took it out in the ocean and there were like these huge boats and she was like, yay! And you know, it was just like, and I'm like, okay, I'm here. And it's almost like 5.30 in the morning, which is usually like midnight for me, but this is wonderful. And it was, it was a truly beautiful experience. So Susan, as I said before, loved life. Um, she loved her friends dearly. She also loved her community. And we share uh, that we were both from a different place. And I think that's why we, you know, like we got along so well because we also were learning to love our new home. And she always told me the stories about how at the very beginning when she didn't know anyone here, she began connecting with her community through yoga teaching. And I thought that was so amazing that she said, Leilani, at the beginning, like, you know, I was all by myself, as you will expect when you don't know anybody. But little by little, she began, she began getting these ladies to learn yoga. And she really, truly loved teaching and making everyone feel better. So I always thought, what a beautiful idea that she had her yoga studio 
at the same, exactly the same place that it was her art gallery. So the yoga students, while they do yoga, you know, they will be surrounded by these beautiful paintings made by her. Susan also loved life, but most of it she loved her son, Mike. And she will tell me stories about Mike and, you know, like, look how good looking he is. He's tall as me. Like, he's definitely my son. <laughs> and talked about Mike and, you know, like, she was so proud of you, Mike. And she loved you with all her heart, that's for sure. And anyway, Susan will be truly missed by, by all of us. And... The one thing I know is that her beautiful spirit is shining brighter than, brighter than ever, whenever she may be. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Well, thank you. That was so beautiful. And this basically concludes things. I just, uh, just a final few thoughts. As, as you know, my mom's fate was she had an exceptional life, but a, a tragic end. You know, and that's that's a sad thing. And then that's, it was a tough, tough, tragic end. But, you know, she's free now. And that's the thing. You know, I, uh, I don't know uh, for religious or, or where she is now, but uh, she had such a positive spirit. And I genuinely believe that she's free. And that spirit is just zipping around the universe, doing whatever she wants, because that's her. And so there we go. Thank you so much, folks, for coming on out. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much.